today, Satan. Not today, Nick. Not today, ankles. We don't have it. Questions. Where's my cocktail? Where? That's my opinion. All right. You ruined it. You ruined it. You did. Uh, what the f is this? The lies. There you the go. Lies. There you go. <laughs> you are the biggest bully in Hollywood, and everyone knows it. Hello, Beverly Troop. Welcome back. I'm the real Andy of Beverly Hills, and welcome to another piece of tea of the day. And I have some exclusive tea for you today. So get ready, bring your coffee or your tea or your blanket. You know, I know it's Tuesday. So if you're working, then just fuck it all. You know, stop working for like the next eight minutes. And I have this tea. You know, Beverly Hills is already filming and it's already happening, you know? And girl, we need to do it. We need to talk about it. So let's talk about this mess. And girl, I have some tea related to Miss Crystal Minkoff because this girl, it's ready to bring it. You know, I'm telling you, I think that according to what I'm hearing, Crystal Minkoff is ready to take center stage this new season. So let's let's just talk about certain things, okay? So the first one is, as I have been telling you, Real House of Beverly Hills is gonna be taking a new route, okay? They want a new direction. They don't wanna go on the same takedown mentality. However, that doesn't mean that we're not gonna still be having some tea. I mean, not tea, but like some drama, you know? Like, we already know that Erica Jane is not letting her grudges go. You know, Erica Jane is ready to, you know, seek revenge for the firing of Lisa Rena. And she's, of course, blaming the other side because we actually don't have a name for them. And I feel that maybe we shouldn't give them a name. I think that every single time that we gave a group a name, it ended up bad, you know? But we have basically the good girls and Erica Jane <laughs> at this point. But anyways, the good girls, you know, and she's definitely blaming Garcelle, Sutton, uh, she's blaming Kyle, you know, and all of that for this arena. So we still have like that Erica Jane situation going on over there. But now we also have someone that little by little have been finding or trying to find herself in all of this situation. And that's Miss Crystal Minkoff. Okay. And according to a source close to production, basically, they're saying that Miss Crystal Minkoff is ready to do what it needs to be done to, you know, basically cement herself as a real housewife for a possibly a very long time. This season, she is not longer afraid to do what it needs to be done. And I'm not talking about creating fake drama. Mm -mm -mm. I'm talking about not letting other people walk all over her like it has happened on seasons before. You know, now let's talk a little bit about Miss Crystal Minkoff and her evolution on the show. Her first season, I think she she was faced with a lot of like questions and a lot of like tests, you know, like she was tested by all of these ladies. Second of all, it was the first time that race was brought into the show, not only by Crystal, but by Garcelle, you know, and I think that conversation itself, it kind of like really like put everything into like, whoa, you know, like, like uh, push the brakes. Is that the, the, the saying? I don't know, Latino moment, guys. But like, you know, like, let's go a little bit slow because it's a show that for many years, it has been all about white ladies, you know, and now we have color and now people are not, they, they don't know how to, to react or how to talk about it. And I think, you know, uh, it kind of like robbed the wrong way certain people, you know, when she had the whole conversation with Sutton's track, it kind of like didn't like, you know, land in, the, in, in a very good way, but it happened. And I think still, if we really rewatch the whole thing, it was a powerful conversation that it needed to happen. However, it's not easy being the first one to have these conversations on camera on a show that is known for not having any conversation about race or color 
or you know the experience of people of color you know so i feel that that's why on the, on her first season she was not so like fan favorite because a lot of people were like oh no we're gonna be i mean we were coming from new york from new york and the whole ebony fiasco you know and all of that so i think people were very like scared and like oh no it's like i don't know how to talk about race you know and it was like very very weird but she managed to still put her point there and, and you know and and basically i think what she's trying to put out there is hey the world change you know and we need to see people for who they are right now and i'm not talking about race or color i'm talking about feelings and what is going inside the whole uh, violated gate you know was also a very a perfect example for that a lot of us felt at the moment that Crystal Minkoff saying that she felt violated was a little bit too much, you know? And a lot of people really came after Crystal and being like, like, bitch, what are you talking about? Like, she was just like taking, you know, a, a jacket to you. And maybe at the moment, you know, it was like very like, what's the big deal? I feel after two years that that has happened and, you know, things, the world has keep evolving, now more than ever we are able to understand that oh okay now we we understand that it was not about oh i feel violated because you came into my room you know it was what is behind that context and why she said that and what that word meant to her and how we need to be more tolerant about other people's feelings you know maybe i mean of course she was not saying like oh my god i thought that Sutton was gonna come here and rape me no you know, it was more about like, hey, this is my, my personal space and, and we all have to respect other people's personal spaces, you know. But again, she wasn't ready to really voice that opinion because it's scary to be the first one to put that out there. And look how much, you know, uh, bad reaction she got for the leader that she did back in that in, in her first season you know now moving into her second season last year it was a little bit different because now we start seeing how she's kind of, kind of like finding her own voice you know she let, felt a little bit more secure against the ladies he knows how these ladies are behaving and how these ladies were you know being so toxic and negative like Lisa Rena, you know, and what the, everyone will be capable of doing, you know? And I think we saw a perfect example of Crystal finally reaching a point where she was able to say like, you know what? Fuck it. I need to say something. I need to do this. And that was the reunion, you know? And at the reunion, we all applaud uh, Crystal Minkoff for what she did to Kyle and to all of the other ladies, you know, um, some of the other ladies, because she was like, this is how I feel, period. Okay, you have to accept it and move on. Not everyone is to think the same way that you do. It is what it is. And she found that voice. Now, according to my sources, they're saying that we are going to get that same crystal, that same reunion crystal, but this time for the whole third season. And this time she's not afraid of voicing her opinions. She knows that she doesn't need to be best friends with all of these ladies, you know? She knows that she is in a reality show and she knows that she needs to speak her mind and not let people walk all over her and that she is not afraid. It is not a secret that Carl Richards doesn't like Crystal Minkoff, doesn't want me Crystal Minkoff to be on the show so bad that she wanted to cast one of the 14 girlfriend, ex-girlfriends from Crystal on the show just to find a way to attack Crystal Minkoff because she cannot do it herself, you know? And Crystal is ready to attack that issue. So I feel that this season, one of the feuds that we might be seeing is going to be Chris, Kyle Richards versus Crystal Minkoff. You know, but like on her whole thing. Because before the past two seasons, Chris, Kyle has been like throwing little jabs here and there, you know, and little comments here and there, but no really like attacking the situation. And I feel that Crystal, finally, it's like, I am tired of this bullshit and she's finally gonna find a way to voice those opinions and put it out there. For once, I am very excited. You know, I think that this is something that we need. We already have you know, Garcelle, which is a very strong lead. 
And look, Sutton is not like she was the strongest person ever, but she also evolved during the years. And she's awkward and an introvert, you know, but she makes her presence being felt. And I feel that now with Crystal, we are really ready to form an even better, bigger group who is going to be uh, not afraid, you know, because we still have, I mean, Kyle Richard is still very in the middle, so you know that she can, she's a, a loose canyon, she could attack here or attack there. We have Erica Jane who is going to be going against this girl, and we have Dorit Kemsley who is basically being controlled by Erica Jane, you know? So there are still three girls plus a possible another new one who might get into this whole mess. So. <sighs> It's going to be a good season, guys, let me tell you. So anyways, that's what I'm hearing so far related to Miss Crystal Minkoff. So let me know what you guys think on the comments below. Are you ready to give your full support for a new, renovator and better Crystal Minkoff on this new season? Let me know, and if you wanna get all the tea related to the Real House of Beverly Hills or any other franchise, Bravo show, or pop culture, make sure to subscribe, 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 hit the notification bell, and I'll see you around. See ya. Bye. Hello everyone and before we start it is time to give a shout out to our partners of this video and are the beautiful people of Rose Forever. They did this amazing bouquet of flowers with special oils that will make the roses last up to a year. This is the perfect gift for you, your mom, your wife, your husband, whatever you want to say, I'm sorry, I love you, I miss you, say it with these beautiful flowers. So if you want to get your bouquet right now, go to the link on the description below and use my discount code ANDY25 and you will get $25 off your order. Again, this is the perfect gift for anyone. So whatever you want to say, say it with roses from Rose Forever.